Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from GreyFlorals.com and I'm super excited to kick off July with another How to Kill a Kit with Style kit share. As always, I'll have all of the important links down below, including my blog post where these products, if still available, will be linked, as well as all of the other lovely participants for this month. So if you guys haven't checked out the rest of the kit shares, I'll have all of their channels linked down below so you can follow them and see what they make throughout the month and share with their kits. Now, you guys helped me for this month over on Instagram. I put up some polls for what you guys wanted to see in my kit, so hopefully this is something that you kind of were looking for if you participated in those polls. And if not, make sure you follow me over on Instagram so you can participate in next month's and future polls that I'll do for determining projects and materials for them. So this is quite a large kit. It's been a very long time since I've worked with or created a 12 by 12 kit, so I'm super excited to be back with one. Now, comparatively to June, June I knew exactly what I was scrapbooking about. I already had a kit put together from a while ago. This I just put together, and I have no idea what I'm going to be scrapping about this month. So a lot of stuff up in the air, but I'm super excited about the color scheme. And like you guys decided on Instagram, the first thing I needed to focus on was older supplies versus newer supplies. So I did try to find some older stuff. So the main one that was inspiring to me was this page, which we'll get into. The second item was a tool focus versus a stamp focus. I probably will slide in some stamps, but I did pull out some tools for this. Now, I don't own too many tools, but the fact that I'm going to keep these techniques in mind throughout the month, you'll see some tutorials for different items, and we'll go through that together throughout the month. And lastly, you chose bright colors over lighter colors. So I try to stay away from the pastels, but I do have quite a lot of brights in here, and hopefully that satisfies anyone who had voted for that one. But at most points, a lot of them were 50-50, so I just checked the last minute, and those are the ones that edged out for a while new was leading, for a while stamps was leading, for a while lighter colors was leading. But let's dive into the paper share. Like I said, this is the main paper that inspired me. And as you guys might not know, if you haven't been following me, I did a huge stash purge back in the month of, rather months of January, February, even before that. I got rid of a ton of supplies. So I don't have a ton of my older stuff that I no longer love, but hopefully this one from Indigo Hills, you guys might remember from their collection. This one's from 2016 and I did pull it for this geometric side, which gives me 80s vibes. But I just adore this color scheme and bold lines like this. I love that additional contrast between them. So I won't be showing you both sides for all these papers. The majority of them are single side picks, but this one does tend to go with the rest of the papers, so I thought I'd show it to you. But I'm just going to start going through these papers and laying them out for you. Now there is a bit of uh, old and new, like I mentioned before, and also paper pad and loose paper. So this one was a loose paper. We have this one from a Happy Spring paper pad from DCWV, matching in some more of that mint color. This one's from the Blush paper pad from DCWV, bringing in a floral. And I do not know the years on all these paper pads, but nothing too, too new. There's definitely nothing from this year. Maybe something from 2020, but I doubt it because I didn't buy too much. This one and this one are from Simple Stories, Life in Color Collection, which was super fun to work with. I did get rid of the rest of that paper pad. I only kept a select few sheets. This um, thin print from American Crafts, which I'm sure is from an original collection, but is actually listed here from 2015. But I thought that was a cute, super cute fun one to bring in again those teals and this mint color and the yellow, of course. This one doesn't have a date on it, and I don't know exactly why or if that's normal Kaiser Craft thing, but this one's from the Fly Free Collection, and it's just this nice green polka dot and a blue background. Then we got this bold, bold print, which is a bunch of black text words with some yellow highlights. So it says all sorts of things like... Um, happy day, awesome, I adore you, stay awesome, you have my heart, sunny day, stuck on you, treasure, grateful, sweetheart, peachy, golden, hooray. Lots and lots of words, so I really like that one, and that's from the Honey Deer collection from DCWV, which is slightly newer, but I don't think it's any longer available at Joann's. This is another one that's newer, um, this is from 2019's Crate Paper um, collection from Maggie Holmes Sweet Story. I honestly hate this side so much. I love the idea of it. It's just not my style for scrapbooking. Like this would look beautiful framed with a quote on it, but I'm just going to use the green polka dot side or teal, mint. Let me know what you guys think of this color. Um, I'm not sure exactly what to qualify it as. Now we're pulling in some old Christmas. So this is the Old Joy collection from Pink Fresh Studio, which is also from 2016. And I just love these little blue branches. They're not super Christmassy compared to this side. So I thought it was a great pick for something a little bit more neutral compared to all these extra bright solids. 
Then I have this oldie but a goodie. This is Jilly Bean Soup Bowl of Dreams. I've put this in many of a kit um, example videos. A lot of my Patreon mini classes feature this paper because it has an awesome other side, but I adore this distressed pink. Um, but this is the other side. This is from 2017, like I said, Bowl of Dreams. But I'm gonna put in the pink side. Hopefully it gets used up, but I really do like that bright pink. And I'll start layering them down here for an extra layer. This is also a newer one from Crepe Paper, which is the same one from Sweet Story. I just love that these yellows match so much. And even though it's from 2019, which is a little bit older, it's still new to me, um, as many of the supplies are, because again, I have gotten rid of so, so many supplies that I cannot keep track of what's new on the market and what's not, and that's what I'm going with. Next up, we have another Ojoy. This is just a nice blue like vine pattern. So the other side's also Christmassy, so it's really fun to have that juxtaposition to use Christmas papers on non-Christmassy pages. And then these ones are not under the last paper there, so they're not gonna stack right. And we're going back to the Simple Stories Life and Color collection for this floral. Again, there is a lot going on in this kit in terms of patterns. Um, I normally like to try to stick with one illustration type, and you'll see when I work through this kit, that's what I'll do. I'll pair similar illustration types. So this doodle pattern here could work with these sort of doodly lines if I wanted to. Um, but a lot of these aren't too bad. The florals don't go super well together, but a lot of these work despite them being different illustration types. Next up, we have another Crate Paper 2017 from the Good Vibes. I really like the yellow again. This is one of my favorite shades of yellow currently. I'm not sure what kind of shade you might call it. It's almost like it's, it's not necessarily distressed yellow, but it's also not mustard yellow. But again, more of that blush color as well, which is in the original inspiration piece. And this also gives me very much Heidi Swap vibes. Let me know if you guys get that vibe too. Then we have another Pink Fresh Studio. Can you guys tell I like Pink Fresh Studio? This is from the Live More Collection. This is from 2017. We have these, again, 80s sort of vibe confetti sprinkle pieces. And this is the other side. A couple colors we don't have, like this lime green. So we probably won't opt to use that one over this one. Then we brought in the Simple Cat Paper. I have a ton of these, if you guys might remember from a while ago. And this is from 2014. Opposite size orange, but I love the black cat polka dot. It's one of my favorite designs that I've seen from Studio Calico. And like I said, this is a very large kit because I have no idea what I'm a scrapbook. I decided to give myself some options. But guess what we're back again with? Some Pink Fresh Studio. This one, however, is from another different collection. This is the Escape the Ordinary collection, which is from 2017. I don't know how they all seem to be from 2017, but I guess that's a thing. But again, same minty color. This one has that watercolor texture, which I think will be really fun to work with. Let me move these down a little bit because we still have a couple more to go. Like I said, a very large kit, but I didn't want to not give myself enough options, so that's okay. We'll make it work. Scoot those down so we can see them all still. And of course we still have to go through embellishments, but we also have another one from the Honey Deer DCWV paper pad. Love me a grid lately. Um, I just like the idea of it and I've seen so many people using grids on Instagram. So I wanted to pull that in for another extra pop of yellow. This one's really hard to read on camera, but it is a blush tone pink like watercolor. You can kind of see some of those shadowings there. This is from the blush collection as well. So same as this paper pad. Um, again, from DCWV that I've had for a long time and need to start using more of. And the last sheet here is from Maggie Holmes Gather. So it's the magical paper, which this is from 2016. So nothing from 2021, nothing from 2020, but a lot of intermixed stuff that I've just been neglecting, not using. And again, like I said, I really, really, really love this color scheme. Um, it's bright, but not too bright. It's not neon colors, which I don't work with often, but it's got enough into it that I have a lot of options for what I can scrapbook. Now getting into the embellishments is going to be fun because as always, I pulled in some new stuff, some old stuff, and embellishments are one of my favorite parts. So when I pulled out this one that's new to me, but a little bit older from 2017. You guys know them, you guys love them, you know I love them. A sticker book, so I'm finally pulling out this bad boy, the Dear Lizzie 2017 sticker book. I think this was her second one, third one maybe, bought on clearance maybe a year ago. It's got the yellows, it's got variations of mint, it's more the blue mint color, but it's got the yellows and pinks, and it's got some neutrals too. I just thought it'd be fun and I love a good sticker book as you guys all know if you watch my channel if not 
I have one of many sticker books. I actually don't have that many, but I do love to use them in the majority of my kits. So I'm super excited to break into this one and actually use, I mean, it's untouched. Isn't that crazy seeing this now? By the end of the month, we'll use hopefully a sticker off of every page. That's usually my first goal is just to make a dent visually on each page. So we'll see how that goes, but it gives me flexibility in embellishing because this is a lot of generic embellishments and layering elements. So it's the perfect one for me when I don't know what I'm going to scrapbook about, so that's why I wanted to include it. Next up, we have uh, paper pads, little paper pads to go with it. This one was really hard, so I just pulled out some random stuff. We'll see how it goes. Firstly was the Lucky Us from Pink Paisley. So this was their Valentine's Day collection from 2019, which has a lot of the colors. And this was gifted to me by a lovely friend. I also have the ephemera for this, but if you start looking, some of these pinks don't match, which is fine. Like this one's cute, easy to use. I do have some red in here as well. So I was like, I'm not sure where I'm a scrapbook, so I'm gonna include this just in case. But some could work, some might not work. And I do have the ephemera pack for this. So if I do end up using this, or if I do want to do like a Valentine's Day e-layout, maybe I'll use this, maybe I'll use the ephemera, we'll see. But I thought I'd try to throw that in there to get some more use out of it. Then we have this oddball, which is the floral number one paper pad. Now, just for some of the pinks. Some of the pinks match pretty well with what I've got going on. Um, I think this pink is a peachier pink, but the dark pink inside matches pretty well. And I know I'm only using one of the pink examples, but um, we have some blush tones that match the original um, example piece, the house piece, you know, those accent pinks that have shown up throughout the papers that we've selected. Um, so not a lot of it. Um, again, sometimes when it comes to six by six papers, I just pick um, layering pieces. And this is one of those collections that has both white and cream backgrounds. Um, so that'll be difficult, but again, some of the pink layerings could work really well. And lastly, for a bit more color, I went for the Really Rainbow Scallops 6x6 paper pad from Lawn Fawn, which is indeed falling apart, um, but it's got, it doesn't have teal, but it's got reds, pinks, yellows, um, so that'll, that'll work as long as it can be functionally together when I need it uh, so I can find what I'm looking for. So we have those elements. Then the rest gets a little bit tricky, a lot of old, a lot of new, and this, by the way, is from 2019, so again, a newer one. And this one is older from 2016. So you can see some old, some new. I think 2019's new. I actually think 2016 still feels new, but compared to the rest of my stash, um, 2016's my old marker. Cause again, I did get rid of a ton of supplies um, at the beginning of this year. So we're on, we're treading water um, at this point, but let me just fly through these embellishments. These are some ones I recently shared in the haul video. So you can check that out. I don't think, is there a date on this? 2018 from Heidi Swap. These also in that video, I just love all of these colors. I love mint and pink together, or teal or green or whatever shade that's supposed to be. These ones are from 2019, which again, feels like last year if you ask me. It still feels like February of 2020. I still feel like it's that every day. Then we have the Everyday Musings Chipboard. As you guys know, what I talked about in this Joann's Hall video where I featured these two new products, I talked about how much I missed chipboard through the month of June because I only worked on my traveler's notebook and I could not put any chipboard in it. So I have stocked up on some chipboard to put into this album. Now going back towards older supplies, we have this set of, well, I guess it's not older, but almost used. Um, so I have three stickers left on this 2018 set from My Mind's Eye. So I'm gonna use a couple of those very nice blush shades, thick stickers, stickers. And then we have some Scrap and Happy Studio Flare. These aren't necessarily new or old. I think she constantly has hearts in her releases, but um, this has been sitting in my stash for a while, so I thought I'd use some of these pinks up, and we'll see about that. These are older. I think these are, yeah, these are 2015, and I did not buy them that long ago. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe I did. I can't remember, um, but they're definitely from a couple years ago at the very least and made in 2015. But these are called placemats by Jelly Bean Soup. And there's like these cool flower shapes, star shapes and heart shapes, and then some crafty themed items. So I thought those would be fun. And these are from the So Sweet Sunshine Soup collection. Again, stark white, which a lot of my papers in this particular kit are white based and not cream based. So I don't have to worry too much about that. New to me, but again, probably not new to the actual designer. Some freckled font labels on this side, which I've had for 
not too long, but I haven't opened them. And then some LA Studio die cut labels on this side. I love layering labels, so I wanted to pull these in. But before we get too far, I also went through my Use It Up stash and found some more Freckled Fawn labels. So this set has three to use, uh, light pink, and then some like super dark teal, which might coordinate with this, but it's a little greener. So I'll have to experiment with those ones. And then on this one, there is the blush, like dark blush pink, a black and white stripe, and then a light blue stripe with a floral. So I'd love to use these up this month. As you guys saw, I made a huge dent in stash last month, so I'd love to do it again this month with some of these empties. Then we can dive into some more new items that I've neglected for some time. This is from the My Mind's Eye Happy Days collection from 2019. I bought both of these at clearance at Tuesday morning. Again, a lot of the same colors. This one introduces a green to it, but again, we have the blush tone pinks, the light minty blue teal green color, which is such a different shade you can work with. Um, and you can make it work like it, this cactus here matches this watercolor down here a little bit more. So we'll see how it goes. And I also included the die cuts because I thought they were fun. The numbers, the tags, lots of yellow as well, which it's not the same exact yellow. It's actually like a yellow green. So we'll see if that pans out, but I thought new to me, but still haven't touched. So we thought we should throw that in there. Then some older, but well, just more well-loved items. This is the Heidi Swap Emerson Lane Sticker Sheet from 2018. We have three, four labels left on this side, black, navy, and two green. Might be able to work those in. And then a couple more green ones on this side. When I pulled this out, I was thinking that these were a different shade of green than they were. So this one might be a stretch, but I know there's some of this darker green in the leaves of the Life in Color collection. So maybe on that layout, I'll be able to use some of these. Nonetheless, I love including extra things in my kits because why not? Another new item to me is this Freckled Fawn uh, block letter, which is a blush pink with gold font. I normally don't include too many alphabets, but I'm trying to use and touch the new things in my stash just by having this for months and I just moved and, you know, purged and didn't, didn't open it. Um, touching them sooner rather than later because they sit in my stash like this item. They'll sit in my stash. I just bought these last month, so like those I can now use. This has been in my stash for a really long time, so we're just trying to dive into it. And then I have some finishing touch pieces that I wanted to include. So first off, I have these sets of puffy stickers. I have yellow stars from Bella Boulevard, which are... Um, definitely older. I think I bought these when I lived in Maryland, so 2017-ish. And then these stickers from the Recollections Valentine's Day um, release from 2018, so I have two sheets in there. Again, kind of going with a the gold theme, but not committing to it so I can integrate other things. And then we also have the holographic in the chipboard um, collection as well, so we've got options, and we love options. Then I have these two items, which are random, but I was um, gifted some tickets a while back in my one of my swaps that I did. So I wanted to include these because they're in the mint color family. And then I found this. Um, this is one of those random um, items you get in like a Studio Calico grab box back when they did those, where they would just send you the first sheet of an alphabet and you're like, what can I spell? So this is a fun, really like Scrabble puzzle because I only have A through S and I'm missing a lot of vowels already. So we'll see what we can spell with this. It'll be a fun challenge. Or maybe I'll just do like this cool geometric tiling with these letters. Who knows? But I thought I'd include that. And as always with my kits, I always reach outside of them because I am just so desperate to act on my creativity and want to make sure I can capture every little bit of it. So I am a kit cheater. I'll admit it once. I'll admit it again. And Hopefully we'll put some dents in these supplies. We've got some easy ones to finish off. We've got some new ones we could possibly finish off. And I just want to have fun with this kit. Now, I know we don't know what we're scrapbooking about, but that's okay. We'll figure it out throughout the month. But make sure you're subscribed so you can continue to see all my crafty videos as well as my other lifestyle and travel videos that will come out in the month of July. And as many of you guys know, July is my birthday month, so there may be a special surprise coming mid-July. So be sure to make sure you're subscribed so you can stay tuned for that because you will not want to miss out on that. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think. Did I follow the rules of old... Tool the tools, guys, you almost let me forget. Tool focus, we forgot about our tools. I only pulled out a couple of them, but my tool focus for this month will be, you guessed it, punches. I moved a ton of punches, and guess what, guys? Punches are heavy. Now, I did get rid of half of my punches before my move, but this is my chance to redeem myself that I do like my punches that I kept, and I don't want to regret it. I actually have a current punch on my wish list, so... I need to make sure I'm using the current punches I have so I can always get new ones um, and continue to use them. So I pulled out one of my favorites, my little heart punch, and then my little scallop from Fiskars, which was probably one of the first punches I ever got. 
That was a border punch. We love to see it. A long time coming. Love these ones, but hoping to use my punches throughout the month. Um, I don't have a ton of other tools in my stash. Like I had my fuse tool, but I don't plan on doing pocket pages right now. I have my um, cuddle bug, so I could have done some die cutting, so maybe that'll come featured. But right now, my tool focus this month that you guys selected over on Instagram will be punches. So I'm super excited to bring in some of those and give them some, chop up some paper with them because I think they're so fun and unique and I often forget about them but hopefully you guys will be excited to see those. So now that we've shared the entire kit and I told you I could also pick out anything else from my stash to use with this kit, hopefully you're satisfied with my choices and following those rules for brights, for tool focus, we got it in there barely, and then older supplies, not super old, but also old and new. It's just a lot of different things and from different years and I think that's kind of magical that it all somehow fits together. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.